about Reg. Uh, come here and look at this. Why, it's functioning splendidly. That dog's heart hasn't missed a beat in 189 days. And just think what this will mean to humanity. If we can revive in the human anatomy hearts which have stopped functioning. And I'm certain we can. Oh, uh, don't you think you'd better run along now? You, you haven't much time to dress for your brother's dinner. Aren't you coming with me? Uh, I'll be along shortly. I have a few things to attend to first. All right. Mr. Philip Bennett to see you, Dr. Clark. Oh, uh, have him come in. Hello, Phil. Hello, Reg. Still puttering around with those artificial organs, huh? Why don't you save living ones instead of giving life to dead ones? Not half as fascinating. How are you, Philip? What brings you up here at this time? Well, I know how Dr. Clark feels about any sort of social function, so I thought I'd stop by and ensure the pleasure of his company this evening, by force if necessary. Well, that'll not be necessary. As a matter of fact, I was just about to leave with Reg. <sighs> I wish I weren't so squeamish. I could be working here right now with the great Dr. Clark. What's wrong with being third vice president of Dad's bank? Oh, just a sinecure, that's all. I'd give anything to be doing the kind of work you're doing, experimenting with the unknown. Well, perhaps you should have finished your medical course. Oh, him? You should have seen him the first time he walked into a dissecting room. He knocked six students over in his haste to get out. <laughs> Can't stand the sight of blood. Does something to me inside. Just a soft A rather commendable trait. Uh, shall we go? All right. I'll drop you off at the apartment, give you a chance to change into your dinner clothes. Oh, I knew there was a catch to it. <clears throat> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention for just a moment, please? It gives me extreme pleasure to announce the engagement of Miss Louise Hammond to my son, Philip. You're a lucky fellow, Philip. If Louise hadn't fallen for you, I might have stood a chance. <laughs> Reg is in love with you, you know. Fine situation, isn't it? My brother in love with my future wife. At least it'll ensure harmony in the family. <laughs> oh, that's a consoling thought. Oh, I'm sure you'll survive the blow without any severe damage. <laughs> just wounded for life. I've already resigned myself to the life of a bachelor. <laughs> they make a charming couple, don't you think, Professor Toller? Perfectly suited for one another. Right. Besides that, they're very much in love. I think that's rather important, too. But then, anyone could see that at a glance. Especially a great psychoanalyst of your reputation. Well, I didn't think it necessary to mention the obvious. <laughs> Forgive me. But I keep forgetting that you deal mainly in repressions. Uh, have you encountered any new ones lately? You'd be amazed the number of persons who suffer from repressions without even being aware of them. You know, they're prone to blame their misfortunes and unhappiness on, oh, anything from indigestion to the neighbor's piano playing without realizing that something that they innocently carry up here. And how do you manage to drag it out of them, Professor? Merely by permitting them to talk about themselves? Strictly between ourselves. Don't you think that a bicarbonate would be a quicker and much more effective cure? My dear doctor, you constantly belittle my profession without making any effort to understand what it's all about. I venture to say that even you could stand the services of a good psychoanalyst. I? <laughs> well, I have no repressions. Oh, but you do have delusions. Delusion? Yes. Aren't you, even at the present time, conducting experiments that you hope will someday be perfect enough to enable you to revive the dead heart of a human being, thereby reviving life? It's perfect enough for that right now. I've already brought dogs, rabbits, and cats back to life. They're running around my laboratory now just as spry as they ever were. Proves my point. Since when has man had the right to bring back life? after it has been taken away by the Creator. You must realize that there's something more than mere physical being involved in this. My dear doctor, you do suffer from delusions. But beware, I warn you, work to ease the pain of the living, not to bring back the dead. You forget, Professor, that I am a doctor, and as such, I'm concerned purely with the physical. Oh, now, come, come, you two. This is a party, well, not a debate. Oh, well, forgive me. I had no idea we had an audience. Will <laughs> you play something for us, Louise? Yes, yes, yes sir, sir. Do it.
who dies, Doctor? Huh? Oh, I'm sorry. I, I'm very sorry. I, I didn't mean to say anything. I, I was thinking about a chap by the name of Panino, Wolf Panino. He's going to be electrocuted at midnight. Oh, how dreadful. Panino. I've read a great deal about him, his criminal activities. He's an interesting case, isn't he, Doctor? A congenital killer. A man whose hands have accounted for a dozen known deaths, and heaven only knows how many more. Do you happen to know what drove him to a life of crime? Apparently some insane pathological urge to kill. He was born and raised in the slums. Even the members of his own gang lived in deadly fear of him, not knowing when he was going to turn on one of them. And he is to be executed tonight? At midnight. How do you know so much about him? I called on him secretly in his death cell two days ago. Why, well, I didn't know that. I didn't want anybody to know anything about it until I was ready. I wanted him to donate his body to medical science, to learn that if after he had been pronounced dead, I could bring him back to life. He called me a screwball. But even if you'd been successful, had he been willing, he'd have only returned to his former mode of living and would have had to been executed again. True. But it would prove that we can bring back the lives of men definitely worth living because they have something worthwhile to offer humanity. Yet there is no proof that any man, once brought back from the dead, would return to his old mode of living. I'm beginning to believe the professor subscribes to the theory of transmigration of the soul. Transmigration is something that is beyond our knowledge in our present form. I do, however, believe in the immortality of the soul. No. Professor, would you have me worry about the soul as well as the body? <laughs> I must say, this is a cheerful discussion for our engagement party. Let's drop it and have some fun. <laughs> Zero. <laughs> Boy, thought you'd be asleep by now. I can see where you're going to spoil him terribly. Oh, don't worry about that. We're great pals. We understand each other thoroughly, don't we? Huh? <laughs> I guess it's time your Aunt Margaret took herself off to bed. I don't stay up too late, you two. No, I've got to leave right away. I've got an early appointment in the morning. <laughs> Good night, darling. Good night, Aunt Margaret. Good night. Good night. Come on, Zero. Happy? Mm-hmm. Gee, I hate to leave. I never seem to get enough of it. I'll remind you of that after we're married. Mm. This is one love that marriage won't cure. Good night, dear. Good night, darling. Good night. A special news bulletin from the state capitol. Governor Mason has refused the plea of Wolf Panino's attorneys for a last-minute reprieve, and the killer will be executed at midnight tonight. Well, it seems we're always the last ones to leave. <laughs> I'm afraid we've outworn our welcome. Nonsense. You two are my dearest friends. You know, you're welcome here anytime. I don't know of anything more interesting than your constant discussions. Well, when you reach our age, you'll discover that life holds many insoluble problems. And that our discussions about them are merely a feeble means of searching for some solution. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> well. Good night. Good night. Why, it's Philip's car. Here, Doctor. That will not be of any use now. Shock killed him instantly. What? What? what it, it can't be. It's impossible. Doctor, you said you could bring back life to dead hearts, make them beat again. I said I succeeded in doing so with animals. You said you could do it with human beings. I heard you. Tonight, you were certain you could revive Benino, a killer. Well, if you can revive a killer, why not kill it? 
a boy who has everything to live for. You said your ultimate desire was to restore the lives of those who are worthwhile. Well, here's someone worthwhile. Restore him. I can make the heart function again only if none of the other vital organs have been injured. You said he died of shock. Yes, yes. Uh, but I'd have to be certain, very certain. Oh, for heaven's sake, Dr. Clark, we can make certain of that in a few minutes. You know we can. Every moment counts. Yes. You've always wanted an opportunity. Well, here it is. Oh, no. Let the dead stay dead. He is my son. I want him to live. Well, doctor? Very well. I'll try. I'll get my car and bring it around to the house. Yes, hurry, hurry. And Eno refused me. And now. How do you do, Professor Toler? Is Mr. Bennett in? He's in the drawing room, sir. Oh, all right. Thank you, sir. Well, how are you, Hobart? Hello, Red. Hello, Hello Professor. Sit down, sit down, sit down. Mr. How is he today? It's not a no change at all. You know, it's been five days since this happened. And, you know, I can't understand it. Louise is with him now. Dr. Clark took her into him. And did he recognize Louise? Did she arouse any memories? He acted the same with her as he did with us. It's as if he'd never seen her before. She had to be introduced. He remembered nothing? We had to tell him she was his fiancée. Does she know the reason? Not even she must know. No one must know the truth. Remember that. We're telling everyone he's suffering from amnesia caused by the accident. Yes, it's better that way. If the truth were to become known, the world would look upon him as a ghostly freak. Dr. Clark has agreed to say nothing of this. In fact, he prefers it that way. He wants to study the results of his experiment even before announcing it to the medical world. Well, uh, hello, Doctor. Hello, Professor. How is he? Physically, he's all that could be desired. He's as well now as he ever was in, in his previous existence. But mentally... No improvement at all? None. His mind seems to be engulfed in a mist which is impenetrable. Well, perhaps it's only a question of time until something occurs that will recall him to himself. Perhaps. But in the meantime, it's frightening. Why don't you speak with him? Maybe if you were to probe at his subconscious memory, you could get Why, him to... Why, I'd be delighted if there's no objection. Oh, none at all. We must try every means. But remember, he won't recognize you. Oh, I understand that, but... It was the first time we'd met. You asked for an introduction. We danced together all evening. You insisted on walking home with me, and we walked all the way in the snow. You said you didn't mind the snow or the cold or, or anything, as long as I was beside you. Do you remember? Oh, don't. 
don't you remember? Don't you? He's been standing like that ever since you left. I want Professor Toller to talk to him alone. I understand. Philip. Philip. Hello. This is Professor Toller. He was a he's a friend of yours. Hello, Philip. I'll leave you two alone. Won't you sit down, Philip? I'd rather stand. In order that you may feel perfectly at ease, I want to assure you that outside of Dr. Clark, I've been closer to your family than anyone else. I've watched you grow from a boy of ten. Now, suppose you tell me what you've been thinking of since your accident. I don't know. I don't know. It's all confused. We'll try and go back a bit. Maybe we can strike a responsive chord. Something that will penetrate all this confusion. Do you remember anything of the time you spent at Croton Prep School? Never heard of the place. Do you recall anything of your years at the university? No, not a thing. Why are you looking out there? What are you looking at? What is it that attracts you? What do you think of when you look out there? What comes to your mind first? Questions. Questions, that's all I get. Do you remember this? Do you remember that? Well, I don't remember anything, and I don't care. Do you understand? Now, get out of here and leave me alone. Go on, get out. I never heard him shout like that before. Why, he would always respond to Professor Toller. Why should he order him out? I can't understand it. I can't. Others, impossible. I must put it out of my mind. What's impossible, Professor? What? I, nothing. I was just thinking out loud. Do you think you'll recover soon? People do get over amnesia, don't they? Amnesia? Oh, yes, it is amnesia in a way. But don't worry, my dear. It's only a question of time. I'm going out for a walk. Tired being cooped up in there. Well, I think it'll do you good. I'll go with you. I'll go alone if you don't mind. Oh, of course. But you can't, you know, not after your memory and all that. Well, someone must go with you. No one must go with me. I insist on it. Oh, but Phil, for this... heaven's sake, leave me alone. If I want to go out by myself, I'll do so. What? as I thought, the same direction that he was looking out of the window. He's hailing a cab. Keep on driving till I tell you to stop. Pull up over here, driver. Carriage trade. I never saw him before. Do you want anything? Yeah, Thank you. 
what's the big idea? Scram out of here. We're old friends. We'd like to be left alone. All right, boys. Why'd you stare at me like that? I don't know. I felt I had to talk to you. Well, I guess I ought to feel complimented. Especially coming from a man of your sort. My sort? Anybody could tell by just looking at you and hearing you talk that you don't belong in a dump like this. What did you come here for? Maybe I came here to meet you. <laughs> you sure know how to hand it out, don't you? What's your name, anyway? My name's Philip. Philip Brown. <laughs> you could have said Jones. Yes, I could have, but I happen to think of Brown first. Live around here? Yeah, just around the corner. My name's Helen Langle, and that's no phony. Not married, are you? Are you taking the census around here? No, just curious. <laughs> well, I met a lot of funny ducks in my day, but you sure take the cake. Maybe you uh, might be interested to know that I was sort of engaged until a few days ago. Yeah, to Wolf Panino. What happened? He walk out on you? Say, don't you read the papers? He was burned. Sent to the chair. They called him a killer. What a very nice guy to have as a husband. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Treated me nice enough. Of course, sometimes I think he talked about getting married just to make me feel good. <laughs> you know, respectable. Kind of fond of him, huh? Yeah, I was. But, well, here I am back in circulation again. Must get kind of lonely at times. I'd like to see you often. <laughs> kind of sudden, ain't it? No, I don't think so. You know, I feel as though I've known you for a long time. As if we were friends. Old friends. Strange, isn't it? Yeah. That's funny. I feel the same way about you. Come back. Come ahead, Bill. Hi, Gabby. Well, Helen. Hello, Gabby. Going. Up there? I wouldn't if I were you. Why not? That's where the Panino gang hangs out. Mitch Larson's running them now, and he don't like strangers to bust in on him. I don't think I'll have any trouble. You wait here till I get back. We're going out. Be a cop. Sporadi would have tipped us off. Besides, that's the signal. Open it. How'd you know the signal? Signal? Yeah. You knocked too long and too short. Did I? I wasn't aware of it. I just knocked. What do you want? I thought you might need some help. I came to join up with you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, come to join up with us, huh? Just like that. What do you think this is, boys' town? <laughs> How do we know you're not a dick? You don't, yet. What are you trying to pull off here? Go on. Get out. Beat it. Don't. Don't. I don't like to be pushed around. And another thing. I don't take orders, I give them. Any objections? You'll be making a mistake if you have. He wasn't the kind of man to lead you. I am. Together we can go places. Say, I'm Gimpy. You weren't getting anywhere with Mitch anyways. What do you say, boys? Ah, uh, Mitch wasn't for us. That's Jess. That guy's Tim. Hi. That's Eric and Hugo. They're brothers. Hi. I'm Philip Brown. Well, what do you got lined up? Well, there was a diamond grab we had planned, and the whole point about it is timing. Yeah. 
Well, what do you know about that? I thought Mitch would kill you. I was just waiting here to find out one way or the other. It's the other. There's no more Mitch. Are you kidding? I'm heading them now, just like your old friend Panino. Yo, what? Mm-hmm. Say, just who are you, anyway? I told you. Yeah, so. yeah, I know, Philip Brown. Well, whoever you are, Mr. Brown, you sure got what it takes. I got what it takes where you're concerned? Suppose you find out for yourself. I will. Come on, let's get out of here. For? Strange. I feel as if I'd been here before. Well, that is funny. I live in this house. Let's go in. Well, say, are we going out first? Well, there's plenty of time for that right now. I'd like to see your place. You mind? You don't waste any time, do you? Well, all right. But don't forget, I'd like to go out. like Panino. Say, if I didn't know better, I'd swear it was him. Well? Sit there and keep it running. Sure it's up there? Yeah, he's been cutting out stone three months. Big enough to knock your eyes out. Well, we'll save him the job of finishing. Take that and anything else that's around, but don't stay too long. Once we get into the back and get that elevator switch working, it's a cinch. All right, I'll keep the building clear. If you hear the horn, duck. Officer? Sure. You must have been working late tonight. Yeah, just on the way home. My share, boys. Where do you live? I didn't mean nose into your business. I just thought I'd drop you off. Drop me at the next corner. You mind if I say something? No, go ahead. It's bad business shooting a cop, especially when you don't have to. You didn't know there was anything wrong. You'd have passed by in a minute. I imagine he would have. Makes me feel good inside. That's funny. Panino used to say the same thing. What's that? Oh, nothing, nothing. Philip! We've been waiting for you. Where have you been? Does it matter? Why, of course it matters, son. You know, you shouldn't be out so late, alone, not since your accident. Oh, Phil, can't you see we're concerned about you? Well, we were almost going to send the police out to look for you. Where did you go? I wish you two would mind your own business. I'm fed up with having everybody cluck over me like a bunch of old hens. If I want to go out and stay out, I'll do so. A crime wave which has aroused the entire city. During the past two months, ten men have been killed indiscriminately. Officers, watchmen, spectators. The cold-blooded callousness with which these crimes were committed have caused both police and newspapers to compare the mysterious leader with the deceased Panino. Early this morning, two former members of the Panino mob, Jess Fowler and Tim Martin, 
were questioned by police and stated that the Panino mob had dispersed after Panino's electrocution. A special squad under Lieutenant Detective Bradley has been assigned to apprehend the criminals and... It's two months now. Two months. And his conduct becomes more and more extraordinary. Sometimes I can scarcely believe he's my son. Is he still so brusque? That's putting it mildly, Doctor. I hate to admit this about Philip, but he's often downright offensive. He seems to have no consideration for any of us. I wonder what he does when he leaves the house. I wish I knew. Sometimes he's gone for days at a stretch, and when he returns, he refuses to tell us where he's been. He insists it's none of our business. But it is. It is. We may find in these mysterious disappearances some explanation for his unusual conduct. We must find out where he goes and what he does. Doctor, is there any earthly reason why Philip shouldn't recollect something of his past? I'm frank to admit that I'm completely mystified by it. Surely Professor Toller must have some idea of the cause of Philip's strange behavior. I've asked him repeatedly. Yes? Well, it may be only my imagination, but it seems to me that every time I question him, he seems to be ill at ease and refuses to give me his opinion. Why? Well, I have no idea. As I've said, it may be only my imagination. However, he was most anxious to hear all about Philip and made me promise to keep him informed about his conduct in the future. Hello there. Hello, hello. Hello. How was the shopping tour? Wonderful. Terrible. Take my advice, Dr. Clark. Never go shopping with a woman. They ask your advice about one thing and then turn right around and buy something else. <laughs> Where's Philip? In the library. Is there any change? No, dear. I, I'll go in and talk to him. I, uh, I've been meaning to ask you this. It's about the plans for our marriage. You see, Philip doesn't remember anything about it, and I... Oh, but of course, if, if you think it would be best to be married, as we had planned, why, I... I... Lu Louise, tell me, do you still love him? Well, I, I think I do, only... Only he's so different. He, he doesn't seem to be the same Philip I knew. Then I think we should wait until he's fully recovered. Yes, uh, that would be advisable. I uh, thought I'd come in and keep you company. Nice of you. I wondered where you... Get him out. Get him out of here before I... I'm sorry, but that dog, it, 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 it bothers me. I didn't mean to explode. Oh, it rather startled me, too. Please, sit down. Uh, Reg and I have been shopping almost all morning. You've been seeing quite a bit of my brother, haven't you? Why, yes. He's such fun. We met quite a few of your friends. They all asked about you and want to know when they could come and see you, but Reg thought it better to wait until you had fully recovered, and I... What's the matter, Philip? Why do you stare at me like that? matter? Well, you said we were engaged, that you were in love with me. Yes, but... Well, are you afraid of me? Oh, oh, don't, Philip. Philip, please. Philip, let me go, please. Well, what is it? What happened? Nothing yet. Maybe that'll teach you to mind your own business. Philip, how could you? Oh, Rich. Uh, I tell you, that guy gives me the creeps. I'd give my right arm to know who he is. If you ever found out, it'd cost you more than that. He must have plenty of cash. Number one's takes his cut. You'd never figure a guy like that would have a hunk of ice for his heart ought to be. It's a funny thing, but every time he walks in that door, I think of Panino. That's why he gives me the creeps. He uses his rod like Panino did. Doesn't care how often it goes off or in what direction. Oh, well, what's the difference who he reminds us of? He got something there. A couple of more months like this, and I'm gonna buy a farm somewhere and retire. Hey, what's keeping you, though? He'll be up in a minute. He's downstairs with Helen. I don't know any more about him than you do. He just won't spill. Yeah. You know, you think being as close to him as you are, you'd at least know who he was. He's a talking kind. Except when he makes love, and then he sticks to the subject. <laughs> He's sure strong for you. Oh, I don't know. Sometimes I think so. Sometimes 
You see, I don't give a rap about who he is. That's his business. The thing that burns me up is that he never takes me any place. I think he was afraid to be seen with me. Here he is now. You waiting long? Oh, I don't mind. What else have I got to do? Boys upstairs? Yeah. I'll go up with you. No, you stay here and keep Helen company. I'll be down in a minute. Sure. Sure. <laughs> Look at the tourists coming in to see how the other half lives. They call this living. Be back in a minute. Looking for someone? Yes. My son, Philip Bennett. He just came in here. Who? Philip Bennett. He's very well dressed. A double-breasted blue suit and a dark hat. He came in just a couple of minutes ago. I think you must be mistaken. Nobody like that came in here. We're positive. We saw him enter. I said nobody like that came in here. You made a mistake. Your eyes must be playing you tricks. Now beat it. What? Never mind. He'll have to come out sometime. Let's wait in that doorway. The mystery's over. Huh? Did you recognize that tall gent? Well, he ain't exactly in my social circle. <laughs> His picture's in the paper plenty. Hobart Bennett, President, City Security Bank. Big Chief Blue Blood. What's he doing here? Looking for his son. The son here? Yeah. You don't mean. Yeah. Wow. Are you gonna tell him his father was here? Me? You think I'm crazy? I ain't sticking my neck out. Oh. All right, let's go. See you later, Hugo. Yeah. I'll catch up with you later. What were you doing in a place of that sort? Who told you to follow me? You haven't been yourself the past weeks. Something is responsible and we determined to find out. What brings you down here in a section like this? Yes, what possible reason could you have for coming here? I like it, do you understand? I like it, and I don't want you ever to follow me down here. Is that clear? Why, Philip, what is this? What is it? If you're in trouble, all you have to do is confide in us. Of course, I realize you're not yourself yet, but your conduct is reprehensible. Striking your brother and running away from us repeatedly as though you couldn't bear our presence? What's at the bottom of all this, son? I don't know. I... I don't know. I, I, I can't explain it. Is it that girl? No, no, it isn't her. It isn't... It isn't anyone. It's... It's just that I... I... I feel that I must do it. I feel it. I... What's the difference? Why? I like it. That's all. I like it. And if you ever come down here again, I won't be responsible for what happens to you. You make me feel cheap. Always leaving me here and never taking me out. I told you I had something important to attend to. Oh, sure, sure. It's always important. But you can't kid me any longer. You're ashamed of me. You're afraid some of your high and mighty friends might see us together. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, don't act so innocent, Mr. Philip Bennett. What name did you say? Philip Bennett, that's who you are. And one of those two men was your father. You needn't try to kid me any longer. Gosh, just imagine, Mr. Philip Bennett, leader of the Panino mob and my boyfriend. Huh, that's a laugh. You're mistaken. Oh, no, I ain't. Hugo told me. Your old man came into Sparadies looking for you. Hugo recognized him. Seen his picture in the paper dozens of times. Why didn't Hugo tell me? Well, he figured that if you wanted to keep it a secret, he'd string along with you. Mm. I see. 
see. Of course, I wouldn't tell anybody. You know you can trust me, don't you, Phil? Sure, sure, of course. And just to prove that I'm not ashamed of you, I'm going to take you out. We'll do the town from top to bottom. Oh, baby, won't that be something? I always knew you were a honey. Love me? Uh-huh. You're for me, all right. How about a kiss? With pleasure, Mr. Ben. <laughs> I really go for you, Phil. I really do. More than I ever went for anybody before. Phil, how's it tight? Your hands. You're choking me. I know. My mother's great, I swear it. Nobody will know, not even Eric. Don't, boss. Don't! He seemed to be trying to explain it to us. It lasted for only a moment, and then he shouted at us to leave him alone. And even threatened us if we attempted to follow him again. Surely, Professor, by this time you must have some opinion regarding the cause of such a complete transformation. Yes, I have formed an opinion. A hypothetical one, purely. Yet one so fantastic, so inconceivable, I, I hesitate to tell it to you. You must. This is no time to spare our feelings. If there's some strange influence behind all this, I think we should know about it. Very well, then. Ever since I first met Philip after his new life, I've been poring over these. And uh, what is this to do with Philip? They all dwell at great length on one subject in common, namely transmigration of the soul. That's impossible. Doctor. Do you remember the night of Philip's death that I told you, whereas it might be possible for you to revive the body, you would also have the soul to contend with, and you scoffed at me? I still don't believe it. I, uh, this is incredible. How else do you explain the sudden change in Philip after he was given new life? Well, how do we know there is such a thing as a, as a soul? My dear doctor, the existence of the soul is something upon which all religions, all philosophies, thoroughly concur. They may not agree regarding transmigration or the manner of its immortality, but as to its actual existence, they leave no reflection for doubt. Oh, I can't believe it. If such a thing as transmigration of soul exists, then we three possess the souls of other persons, persons who lived before us. We do not possess the souls, Hobart. The souls possess us. That is, if we proceed along the theory of transmigration. But, uh, Philip was 27 years old. Surely he'd remember something about his past. You forget, Doctor, that while you revived the body, the soul escaped. And it is the soul that is the memory, not the body. What manner of soul possesses him now? Whose soul has he? That is something that it will probably never be in our power to determine. Hello, Eric. 
Jack. Never thought you'd be calling to see me of your own accord. Too bad about your brother. Yeah. Nice funeral they gave him. Anybody be proud of that? Yeah. Well, come on, come on, spill it. What's on your mind? I want you to get the guy that killed Hugo. Now, don't tell me you want us to find out who he is. No, I know who he is. That's why I'm here. Are you getting soft? I thought you boys always took care of those little matters between yourselves. We usually do. But this is different. I got my reasons. You remember that Helen Langle was killed on the same day as my brother? Well, the same guy did it. You interested? Go on. Maybe you'd be more interested if you knew it's the same guy you've been hunting for weeks. The one that's behind all these robberies and killings. Sit down. What's this fellow's name? Don't laugh when I tell you. I don't see anything funny about this. Well? Philip Bennett. Never heard of him. The society boy. His father's Hobart Bennett, the banker. That Philip Bennett? Oh, you're crazy. I told you not to laugh. Look, if this is a game, I don't get it. And believe me, I don't appreciate it either. Do you see a grin on my puss? I'm giving it to you straight. He's heading a Panino mob. Tell me what you know. He walked in on us a week after Panino got burned. Knocked off Mitch Larson and took over. Told us his name was Philip Brown. What did he knock Mitch off for? He don't need no reason to knock anybody off. Real bad, huh? You ought to know. He gives us all the willies. Works just like Panino did. What makes you so sure he's Philip Bennett? Hugo recognized his old man when he came around his parade. He's looking for him. Hugo told Helen. That's how come they both got it at the same time. You still got your good health? He didn't know that Hugo told me too. Or else I wouldn't be sitting here. How come you didn't take care of him yourself? Too easy. This way his whole family pays. I'd feel a lot better. Why should a young society boy like Philip Bennett be mixed up with your sort? That's the one thing I can't figure out. Maybe it's thrills, I don't know. Some of those guys will screw you in a bat. Yeah, that don't make sense. Maybe he's too big for you to touch, huh? You know better than that. But what evidence have I got other than your word, which is nothing but the word of a gangster? I thought of that. That's why I waited till now. I just left him. Yeah? We're pulling a job tonight. And if you caught him actually at the works, you wouldn't need anything else, would you? No, that's all I'd need. And you'd take care of me, if you know what I mean. Well, I'll do what I can. Miller's Warehouse, 8th Street, 11 o'clock. that owns this joint's in for a surprise when he opens up. <laughs> Hugo would have got a kick out of this job. Yeah, he sure would have. Come on, come on, cut out the gap and start getting the stuff down to the car.
He promised to be here quite early. Perhaps he forgot. Perhaps. But I reminded him again this morning. Oh, I'm sure he'll be here. Well, here he is now. Happy birthday, fella. Huh? Oh, thanks. We've all been waiting for you. I'm sorry I'm so late. I... Well, I'm glad you remembered, son. I was beginning to fear we might have to celebrate your birthday without you. I got here as fast as I could. Yeah, you're all out of breath. Congratulations, Philip. Yes. yes. Mine also. Thanks. Thanks. I, uh, I'll be down in a minute. I want to clean up a bit. Go right ahead, but don't be too long. I've had my eye on that cake all night. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad he got here. I'm Lieutenant Detective Bradley. I'd like to talk to Mr. Bennett, Hobart Bennett. Will you wait here, sir? I beg your pardon, sir, but there's a Lieutenant Bradley of the police to see you. To see me? Yes, sir. Well, have him come in. Very good, sir. Will you go in, sir? Thank you. You want to see me? Yes, sir. Uh, I hate to intrude like this. We trail an escaped thief to this section. We're covering every house. Well, he couldn't be here unless he broke into the servants' quarters. Yeah, I'll take a look down there. You haven't happened to see anybody come in here during the past 15 minutes, have you? Why? No one. We've been sitting here all evening. Oh, my eldest son. Philip, this is Lieutenant Bradley of the police. How, How are, are you, Lieutenant? You've uh, been here all evening, have you? Yes, we're celebrating my birthday, as you can see. Say, that cake really looks like something. Isn't it about time you were cutting it up? Well, we're sort of waiting for midnight. See, everything of importance sort of takes place at midnight. New days, new years, births, deaths. Why is that, Lieutenant? I don't know. Strikes me one time is about as good as another for births and deaths. I think the mystery story writers have over-publicized it. However, there's something intriguing about the term midnight. Well, just to show you we don't hold on to superstition, we'll cut it up right now. Uh, you'll stay and have some, of course. I don't know if I can. Uh, well, maybe just a minute. Good. There we are, Lieutenant. Ah, thanks. Louise, will you do the honors for us, please? Of course. Won't you sit down? Oh, thank you. Where was this robbery? A warehouse on 8th Street. We got them all except the ringleader. Do you know who he is? Mm-hmm. One of the gang tipped me off beforehand. Strange, he was shot too. We couldn't tell him apart in the dark. Do you expect to get this ringleader? Sure, sure, sure. Say, I wish my wife could make a cake like this. Yeah, we'll get him all right, no rush. Uh, what sort of fellow is he? Desperate, very desperate. A killer. Yeah, I've got to watch my diet. I can't eat this. Yes, this fellow's a real killer, all right. The funny thing about it is, he works just like Wolf Panino. And he's running the Panino mob. Odd, isn't it? Did you say Panino? Yes, you remember him, don't you? He went to the chair about uh, two months ago. Doctor, that same night. What's the matter? Is something wrong? Oh, no. Uh, just that we'd read about Panino in the papers. Uh, he had nothing on this new fellow. Oh, uh, now that I think of it, he has the same first name that you have, Philip. Philip Brown. Probably not his right name. Ah, uh, probably a phony. Maybe you remember reading about that boy and girl that were killed down the east side last week. They found out his real name, so he killed them. Some relative innocently went down to the place, and that's what gave it away. Uh, where was this place? Oh, you never heard of it. It's down in the slum section. A place called Sparades. Sparades. Oh, I'm sorry. Maybe you can't stomach this sort of talk. You folks uh, seldom see this kind of thing. Although once in a while you find a person with plenty of money, uh, plenty of family background, and for some insane reason he decides to become a criminal. 
I never could understand it myself. Well, uh, there are often extenuating circumstances. Maybe, maybe, but uh, I let the alienists worry about that. My job is to catch them. And do you always catch them, Lieutenant? Well, we've got a pretty good average, I guess. See that? Oh, thanks. You, uh, something stuck on your shoe. Oh, so there is. But no, no, that'd have changed them. Must be some mud. It looks like time. Yes, it is. Guess I got it on the pavement. Or on the roof. Roofs are covered with tar. I used to play on them every day when I was a kid. Cops and robbers. And I always played the robber. Now I make a living playing a cop. Shows you, you can't ever tell how a kid will wind up. Well, I... So I'd better be going. Strange you didn't see anybody come in here. Oh, we uh, picked up the cab driver who uh, drove the fellow we were looking for away from the robbery. He says he let him off down the street and saw him run in here. Mind if I bring him in to take a look around? Oh, he couldn't be here. Well, then there won't be any harm done, will there? It's just one of those routine things. Won't take a minute. I'll bring him in. Just a moment, Lieutenant. In case you didn't know it, the house is surrounded by police. I assume that much. That's why I want you to help me. Help you? Yes. Go to the door and order them away. You and I will wait here for a while, and then we'll leave together, in case they don't obey. That would work all right, except, uh, what if I refuse to order them away? You forget you told me the fellow you're looking for is desperate. Very desperate. Philip, you can't. You must... Oh, Philip, stop! Quiet! I haven't much patience, Lieutenant. Well, I, uh, I haven't any alternative, have I? Yet I could just sit here and... Think it over for a moment, couldn't I? Yes, you could. But after a while, the police would become concerned about you and break in. <coughs> We're all going out of here together. Go ahead and walk ahead of me. You don't know what you're doing. You can't do this. You can't. I'll go with you alone, but not them, not Dad. We're going out of here together. had to do it, even though he was your son. He wasn't my son. My son died two months ago. First sign of life he's shown since the automobile accident. Concussion of the brain is a serious matter, Louise. For a while, I thought he'd never pull through. Fanino, Fanino, Fanino. Thank heaven he's coming out of his coma at last. Now, don't try to move. Where? What? What? You've been in a coma for four days, ever since your accident. Darling, I'm so glad you're better. So glad. You'll never know how glad I am. A nightmare, a horrible nightmare. What is it, darling? Nothing, nothing at all. 